All right. Did Maru say anything spicy, guys? Did Maru hit us with any spicy quotes? I missed it. Just uh, talking a little bit to uh, Vicky. Making some plans for the evening. Taking a look at the Discord. Nothing spicy out of Maru. Oh, Poppy can choose. It was hard. Uh, was it once more three different languages to each other? <laughs> Classic. Poppy. Poppy. No. Oh my god. I never liked Pomeranians anyway. That's not even a dog. Honestly, that does not even qualify as a dog. I'm done with this thing. <laughs> Very bad rat. <laughs> Maxeth. Look at Maxeth, the goat. The only one with 100%, guys. <laughs> Max said the goat. A bit split, right? Wow, Indy went vitality. Indy really wants to make sure he never casts the big brain bouts again, eh? Max said is goaded. The only one with 100%. Let's take a look. Uh, the four players of Vitality, but obviously we are only expecting to see three. Ryong, Solar, and Maru are the back-to-back -back champions of the WTL Code S. Crank is the captain. Can you provide an invite? I am not in charge of it. Lino is. I don't know if Lino is here, but I'm sure that he will take a look at the Discord in time. But yeah, I don't. I think 9 p.m. We're probably not going to make 9 p.m. right. If we make 9 p.m., this is going to be a very one-sided Grand Finals. I mean, I guess auto draft wouldn't even be the worst thing ever. It's not like I know a lot. I have a pretty good fantasy team in my first draft. I do one league with uh, Wardy. I can let you guys know my first few picks for the couple of NFL diehards out there. I'm pretty happy with my team. I think I've got a good team. You guys can either start laughing. So my first pick was a CD lamp. I think my second pick was Olaf. Third pick, I maybe I've got Cook, Jay Cook. I've got Richardson as my quarterback. I've got A. Jones from Minnesota. I've got Goodert from Philadelphia as my tight end. I've got Kirk as my kicker. No, wait, sorry. As a wide receiver. I've got the Falcons, obviously, as defense strength. And then I've got Tucker as my kicker. Sick team. And then I've got a whole bunch of extra running backs and wide receivers. But I believe CD Lamp is goaded. I think Cook is a very good running back. Olaf is good. A. Jones. Woo! Out of the 14 teams, my team is ranked third in the power ranking right now. It is a... Uh, I had a 14. I think it's 14. It's a 14 team league. Uh, according to the power rankings I did uh, third best Bardi is number 10 Lino is in that league as well he's number 14 <laughs> Vicky is 9th my tight end good at isn't Philadelphia good there are the boys the back to back champs they look a little concerned. <laughs> Ryong versus Saro on Dynasty. That is going to be our opening match. Obviously, we have vetoed Ghost River once more. I actually don't know what they vetoed. Probably uh, post-youth. If they worry about Azurgis. That would make sense to me, but let me take a look. Triggerist says that he doesn't know how to join the call. I absolutely posted the link in the chat. What if Rainer on call again? I uh, hope you understand that I'll let Rainer relax for a little bit. Rainer literally left it all on the battlefield against Clem. Six ridiculous games. We're going to let Rainer chill for a little bit. Let him eat. Let him relax. And let him power up one last time for when we need him the most. If Rainer wants to join, he can always join. He knows that he can always join, but 
And we're obviously going to give Reina the best possible prep for the grand finals, guys. Six months of video gaming have led up to this moment. We were here one year ago. Back then, I think we were the favorites entering the grand finals. But it was Solar who did us dirty. Winning a whole bunch of ZVZs in a row. And it kind of started the era of Solar has the best ZVZ in the world, Roddy. I think after that, Cero has set that record straight a few times. But... It did not go our way, even though we were the favorites. Let's see if we can stop them this time. Let's get it on. Dynasty, first round. We knew that Dynasty was going to be the opening map. We obviously did some theory crafting. This is a great Protoss map, so sure, we could have gone for Trigger or Showtime. But we decided to go for Saro, because I had a strong feeling that they would send out Ryung. And I kind of like this for us, even if it might be tricky for Saro. Like, I believe that Saro can overcome this, and that gives us a good start. And then we can let our Protoss nerds play later on something that they enjoy a bit more because they don't actually necessarily love this. There are Protoss players out there that absolutely love Dynasty, but not every Protoss does. So we went for Serral first and we're happy with it. Plan came together. Thank you, Naptu, for the tier 1 subby. Bottom left side, the man who just clutched it in the ace match. That was perhaps the least exciting part of a mega exciting clan war. But Saro had a soul read on everything that Cure was doing. Bastard Saro, bottom left, representing Vitality. It is one of the best TVT players on this planet. The man who 2 0 Clam a while ago in the WTL Codas regular season. It is Ryung. So the way that it works right now is the same as it worked in the previous match. If Saro wins 2 0, Saro stays on. They lose a life. If it goes 1 1, both teams lose a life and we send in two new players. And the lives are obviously shown at the top side of the scoreboard as a Rainer, excuse me, uh, not Rainer, Saro loses a drone to the Reaper of Ryang. Ryang off to a good start here. Now getting a bit greedy, really wants that Zergling too. A strong start for Ryang. Strong start for Ryang. And as he is going up to three bases, one command center in the main, the other one in the pocket expand. Sending over a whole bunch of SCVs to start mining of the gold. Could just be another 8 Rex. Saro did just display us that he's incredibly good against it. If he feels like it's coming. Team League Ryong is a beast. Absolutely not looking at this as a guaranteed 2-0. But hey, all 6 players that are going to play or more are very good. It's never easy. Overall we're happy with this draw. This is what we thought was going to happen. And if this is what you were aiming for and you get it, you can't be unhappy, right? Zergling speed is done. The Reaper is very low on HP. The Zerglings of Cero are going to be able to get two hits up. And that is good enough. The Reaper dies right before the Hellions are here to save the day. So we lost it round. We killed the Reaper. We're playing against Triple CC. And we'll take it from there. <laughs> uh, Ryong, Ryong is very cool. I have a lot of admiration for this man. He's been around for so long. I think a lot of you guys will remember the early days of the IPL in Las Vegas where Ryong was so close to winning a GSL code S and it could have gone his way. But he was stopped by a Broodlord Infester. Wasn't happy about it. Rightfully so. <laughs> <laughs> if every single game you go up against Broodlord Infester and there's no army comp you can make to deal with it, I would also be a bit frustrated. But he's a cool guy. But today we are rooting against him. Yeah, he's incredibly nice. Nothing but love for Ryong. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not on the team. Cyril <laughs> <laughs> spreading some creep. Working with 48 drones at the moment as a roach one has been dropped. We all know that Cyril loves the roaches in this matchup. Sometimes he goes straight into roaches without circling speed. And it's like a very heavy emphasis on the drones. This time it's a little more standard. We did open things up with circling speed. But Cyril still drops the roach one a bit later. I don't know when Ryong's first ever appearance was in GSL Code S. You guys that are maybe diehards when it comes to Korean Starcraft 2 history can tell me, but pretty certain it's at least 2011. Maybe even 2010, but I don't know. 2010 Starcraft was very wild. I think 2011 is a pretty safe call. That is 13 years ago, so it's obviously really cool to see, still see him play. And this man has absolutely carried his weight for Team Vitality in this Team League. Last season, if it wasn't for him, it probably would have been Team Liquid winning it all. 
Because that clam was as scary as the clam that we saw today. And it's the clam we've seen over the last few weeks. That clam too was invincible. And it was Ryong who stopped him in the end. They send him out as a revive player to just take one map. And then somebody else could clutch it in the ace match. They went for Solar I believe back then. Ryong clicking on the fourth base of Cero. And I don't know if Cero can actually save this. Well maybe we can. But Banshees do have a lot of damage. The Hellions helping out as well. Cero really doesn't want to kill this hatchery. But I'm afraid he has to. I am afraid he has to. That's a Hellion. Well, pretty strong start overall by Ryong. Two SUVs are on the wrong side of the wall. So I do think he's going to lose at least one. Cero wants to get the second one too. And he does get it. Losing the fourth hatchery does sting a little. Nine roaches on the production tab. Uh, there's a 1-1 one, one as well on its way for Cero. Also building an infestation pit. We saw earlier today in a game where Reina had a very bar bad start against Clem. And uh, uh, Ravagers can be incredibly obnoxious to deal with as a Terran. When you have this pocket expand. 12 minutes left on the prediction. Close it maybe. Yeah, Let's close that prediction one minute from now. So I went for a very long prediction. Because I had no idea how long everything was going to take. I thought it was going to be a 7 minute a break but maybe because the first clamor was so long they decided not to go for that so one minute left on the prediction if you want to wager some imaginary internet channel points you can do that right here right now we'll close it in a minute is dream still playing i haven't seen him in a while Ryong picks up two medevacs full of marines he is building a fourth command center and honestly i kind of like that because i kind of feel like the longer this game goes the more that i like it for yona Dynasty with that gold can obviously make some uncomfortable scenarios in the early game But Terrans just have a little more firepower than you expect them to have And we're gonna play all out macro here feeling pretty good Ryong's Marines have been revealed by creep on the top left side But Sarah had no units in position so he is gonna take a bit of a beating here losing a queen and four drones uh, Ryong is playing a strong game so far really wants to get that hatchery early today We saw Clem make a call to go for a hatch when he couldn't quite get it Ryong feels he can get it and he gets it Loses every single marine in the process, but he does get it. Uh, Sarah is harassing the gold. Ryong's supply is not very hot, by the way. It's only 124. Is our prediction closed now, by the way, guys? Is, do I have any... Because uh, I don't really want to alt, alt tab right now. If there is any moderator right now that can close it for me, that'd be awesome. Let me know when it's closed. I don't know if it's worth to lose that many. Personally, I don't think so because it's not like there is a follow-up push. I don't know. I think I'm okay with it for Saro. It's a bit of a 50-50 maybe, but I don't hate it. If anything, it just wants more. Should make this game go on for a whole lot longer. And the longer it goes, the more confident I'll get. Because Saro's late game is incredibly good in this matchup. I know Clem got the best of him, but Clem is special. Thank the Lord, there is only one liquid clum. It's still open. All right, I will close it. Let me just take a little look at this skirmish, and then I'll alt tap very quickly, and I'll close it for you guys. The young dropping the Marines in the pocket expand. I hope that Sarah has an answer for that, and he does. Sarah is going to disengage. There's a baning or two in the mix. The young a little bit late on that pickup. It's going to pick the units up and go home. I'll close your prediction right now, guys. Oh no! Damn it! Somebody did. <laughs> Got you baited by my mods. Oh, I closed it. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. We miss nothing, guys. We miss nothing. Ryong stimming down this ramp, trying to take a good fight. Saro does not have a crazy amount of bailings, but just a few bailings already make us feel a little bit safer. What we do have is Hive Tech. Saro does not have a very high drone count. This is definitely something to keep in mind as... Ryong is still thinking about dropping, while Sarah is actually grabbing a lot of his units, thinking about going to the other side of the map. Ryong has been mining of his gold base for a while, and I think we are like a minute or so away from those gold minerals disappearing. And that will obviously give Sarah a new attack path into the main base of Ryong. Single parasitic bomb gets dropped, one medevac gets abducted. Uh, not bad by Ryong, but he does end up losing 8 marines and one of the medevacs. Ultralist Cavern on the way. There's a few Marines are going ham. They're in very deep. 
Overall, it just feels that uh, Ryong is very marine heavy. We should really struggle with the army that uh, Saro is working with and with the army that Saro is going to have in the near future. I think their first gap is here, so Zerklings can go through. Then could get abducted. SCVs are going to try to block the entrance for the Zerklings, but oh, that's an interesting way of going about it. That is the downside of Dynasty. I wonder what Ryong's game plan really is. I feel like we haven't really... I, I kind of thought he would maybe have something specific that he's gearing up for a certain moment where his army gets a power spike, but kind of feels like we're just leaning back and we're playing a nice game of StarCraft. I don't mind it, but I don't know if that's the best chance that he has in winning this. Got like 12 tanks, yeah, I know, but if we don't have a whole bunch of girls, what are these tanks going to do? Man definitely has tanks for days. Almost feels that his game plan was... Let's hope Sero all ins me and I won't die. But if Sero doesn't all in, what do we do then? First few goes on the way. And since Ryong is indeed very close to maxing out cute with the missile turret there, by the way. But more mineral patches will disappear. One tank gets abducted. Ryong has got a million tanks in his natural, but he's got very few tanks over here. This will allow Sarah to get at least on top of some of these marines, kill a couple of the SCVs. Get a sense of tower. Young, we don't have any medevacs here, mate. It's risky, but nice target fire on the bailings, to be fair. Does Sarah have a burrow? I don't think we do, right? Uh, late game TVZ. When we look at Clem playing it on some of these maps. He looks unbreakable and he makes it look so easy and it kind of feels so unfair, right? Because goes go, peel, 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 but that really is a bit of a clam thing. <laughs> it is not easy to be clam. There is only one liquid clam. And I'm sure Ryong is an excellent late game player too, but I think we are not insulting anybody when we say that he's not quite clam. So far, so good for our Korean Terran. He's absolutely not playing a poor game. He is maxed out. He's got solid upgrades. He is on five bases. He's even building a base on the left side of his pocket expand to maybe get his hands on the rich Vespian geyser. Every single time a sensor tower dies, I get a jiggly feeling in the bottom of my tummy. Saro does not cancel that hatch, so he loses that. A few zerklings do get on top of the SCVs in the natural. Oh, Ryong flies over a spore crawler, loses eight marines inside of one medevac. Is able to unload the other ones. Sero now wishes that he at least mined out one of his mineral patches. I don't know, Ryong is in an okay-ish spot. But it also feels that Sero is still gearing up. We are looking at a Sero that is not yet in his final form. And Sero on Amphion earlier today I think looked incredibly good against Cure. And I would even say that it might be easier to play that kind of game on Amphion than it is on Dynasty. But Acero looked so damn sharp. So we're gonna drop a parasitic bomb on the Banshee. Two of the Vikings die immediately. Banelings are gonna roll forward towards Marines and Ghosts. The Ghosts actually do a great job in tanking. Two of the unseached tanks get abducted. Uh, Ryong actually sieges one of them right next to the Roaches and Ravages. Sero had enough of that Banshee, so he drops a parasitic bomb. And you look at the piggy banks, guys. Even though Ryong has good income, and he has been mining for a long time, he is currently not maxed out. What he does have is a million tanks, and Sero's about to see how many tanks he really has. Big attack here by Sero. Please kill the planetary, and he does. Would have been bad if we don't get the PF there. It's a Chinese game client. They have slightly different death animations than the European one or the American one. I guess there is no European one. Another sense of tower gets built, but Sarah hates them as much as I do. He's all over it, trying to find a good fight here as well. Ryong does once more have that crazy tank count. Important that Sarah does not underestimate how many tanks this man has. I think he's starting to have a pretty good read on it because the overseas sees five on the right. His main army saw four at the top. We're going to queue up seven Ultralisk and a couple of Infestors too. You cannot Neuroparasite a, a building now. You can Neuroparasite an SCV and build your own command center. 
That'd be one way to make a statement in <laughs> game one of the grand finals. <laughs> Saro ends up with a couple liberators. That'd be sick. Straight to YouTube, baby. Imagine how rich Loco would be out of that video. You won't believe what this Zerg player did. Links, Banes and Ultras lead the charge, but the Ryong does land a couple of snipes, loses a few of the tanks. Sounds like a term of it. The man who was playing it, then yes. The man who was casting it, no. <laughs> Don't only see an arrow already going to the Liberator and the Zerg army, question mark, shock face, ah! That YouTube meta is a special one. Ryong looking pretty strong, but... Obviously, Saro did temporarily have a base that is supposed to be divided. One Burrowed Investor left behind. Saro finds a little surround on the Marines and Marauders. Ryong is battling. Trying to do what I don't think a lot of people would expect him to do. And that is take a map here in the Grand Finals in a best of two against Saro. But he is absolutely a Team League stud. And he was the MVP for Team Vitality last time they won it. Two seasons ago, it obviously was Solar with his DVZ victories over Sarah and Rainer. Last season, it was Ryong, the man who was able to stop Clem. Ryong's job was to get Sarah tired. I mean, don't forget that obviously it's getting pretty late in Korea. I mean, they knew this. They knew that they were going to play second. But that first Clem War could have also been over in like two hours. Instead, we started at one and we finished at six. A StarCraft 2 clan war that lasts at 5 hours. That's when you know you've watched something a bit special. Who's going to win? I still feel confident for Saro, but it is obviously important that we start getting some bigger victories. Perhaps this is one of these big victories. With Banelings leading the charge, we drop a blinding cloud. Hopefully we can kill one of these orbitals. Come on, one Karosa ball, Yona. Yona, please, one Kar Oh, okay, we don't need it. I went full demo there. Saro, please. 72 additional Zerglings on the way as Ryong is just building additional command centers for days. Building a couple of extra factories. Definitely playing a strong game here and his army is scary. Ryong is great in the team lakes. And if he can make it to this kind of a setup, probably very good as well. Starting to have a bit of a piggy bank that Orbital has been floating for a little while there as a burrowed Zergling. It's preventing it from landing. I don't think Saro really wants to see Ryong get this base. Because if Ryong would be able to get truly this base up and running and fortify it. Then Saro's base in the top left is in danger. And that one is nowhere near maxed out yet. Or mined out. Saro knows that so he's going to go for it. But it feels a little too choked up. Does not quite want to commit. Instead finds a great fight with the Zarklings. This is, uh, this is amazing for Saro. That is a lot of tanks going down, a lot of these very expensive tanks going down, just for a few Zerglings, and Saro has minerals for days. One Orbital is landed, I don't know if Ryong is going to be able to save it, based on the minimaps, he is not saving it. So Saro doesn't just get a whole bunch of tanks, gets an Orbital Command as well. One of the tanks of Ryong is going to crawl forward and will start shelling away at this base of Saro on the top left. Saro takes out the Sensor Tower from the high ground. <laughs> Curing up a great Aspire. He absolutely does, but he's not there yet. Oh, Saro takes a bad fight here. Needs a lot of tank shots to the face. Probably wondering how many freaking tanks does this guy have? And Ryong just says yes. Yes, I have a lot of tanks. And for a split second, Saro wishes there were Widow Mines on the map. But then he thinks back of all the devastating mine hits over the last few months and he says no. Ryong leads the charge here with a whole bunch of ghosts. Saro could really use a nice fungal. And, uh, like that's pretty adventurous what Ryong did then. I did obviously throw down a scan. I mean Ryong is not really trying to find crazy damage on the other side of the map. He's just trying to get his hands on the bases he feels belong to him. Saro leads the charge here with his Vipers, drops a couple of blinding clouds. The Lings and Banelings do a pretty good job in dealing good damage against the tanks. Orbital will lift up. It honestly helps the Terrans, I feel like, when they have an Orbital in situations like this. Instead of having to lose the planetary. Saro does have a big gas bank, and that makes me very happy. 
Ooh, no Nidus network actually in the bottom right side. So all of these drones are stuck. And Saros not just going to end up losing this hatchery, but he's actually going to end up losing 14 drones as well. As an investor is going to Unburrow and land a fungo on the medevac will allow the Lynx and Ultras to kill a couple of these units. But that was a big victory for Ryung. Ryung doesn't just get the base, but Ryung gets 16 drones as well. Now losing a few drones is not too bad, because we obviously need to make sure that our army is big enough. 138 army supply, potentially right now for Cero. 22 minute game already on Dynasty. Broodlords are going to get a cancel, if not a kill, on one of these bases. And right now, I don't think the ghosts are here. And that obviously means that a lot of these tanks are in trouble. I'd love to see Cero just go for these tanks. Because these three tanks that were on the left side were very, very exposed. Solid infested count there as well. Ryung splits off some bio to go for a tiny counterattack. Here come the ghosts. Ryung needs to avoid fungals. We'll eat a very big fungal to the face. The second fungal is pretty decent as well. Excellent start to the fight there for Cero. Needs to send over a couple of units to the bottom side of the map here though. Planetary Fortress is going to be repaired. It takes a lot of damage. Still being repaired. Another tank will fall. Ryong is losing a lot of supply right now across the board. Sarah obviously should have money and larva for days. The ghosts are looking for this one moment where they can just stand there and do their pew 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 thing. Sarah's having none of it. One investor. Low on HP but at least queens are there to transfuse it. Ooh, the Vipers. I'm not going to say it, guys. <laughs> but the Vipers live. And that's all that matters. Bongo will cancel everything, yeah. Not a big Bongo landing on some of these girls. As uh, Ryang, his tanks are getting absolutely obliterated by some Ultras in the bottom right side. And just like that, Ryang doesn't just lose the base, but Ryang drops heavily in supply. Without one real game-ending fight, it is Cero with his Broodlords in the top left and his Lynx and Ultras in the bottom right. And suddenly Terran doesn't look all that invincible, does it, guys? <laughs> it is so hard to do what Liquid Clem does. And in the hands of that French kid, yeah, the race looks ridiculous. But that really is a Clem thing. Cero looks powerful as ever here, 24 minutes into Dynasty. Even if it wasn't easy, uh, Ryang absolutely had his moments and he still has an army, has a bit of a chance. I think we can all agree that things starting to look good. A overseer is absolutely needed here. Saro eats a tiny EMP to the face, but saves most of his spellcasters. As the Zerglings are looking for a surround on the Thor, one of the tanks. It's a lot of expensive mechanical units going down on the side of Ryong. And Saro, his Broodlord Infestor army is still here. Saro trying to deal some mental damage here to Ryong. <laughs> it should not be allowed to defeat Ryong with Broodlord Infestor. Ryong is like, ah, 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 not again. Thought those days were behind me. <laughs> Poor guy. For a split second, Ryong closes his eyes and he thinks he's back on a stage in the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. Now an MGM Grand property, by the way, guys. Fun facts with Roddy. Used to not be the case. Now it is. <laughs> And the crowd goes wild as Ryong says, Imba, 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 Imba. <laughs> Another planetary goes down. Ryong losing all the control he ever had of the top side of the map. He's still doing his best. With a bit of a uh, yeah, ghost mech army almost at this point. Haven't really seen any Marines and Marauders here for a while. Oh, I, I know Fox. I already said it earlier. The man was absolutely not wrong. The young throws down a scan and he sees that Cero still has a little bit of everything. One sharking investor is going to try to make it behind enemy lines as the doors are open, by the way, for Zorklings to casually stroll into the main base of Ryong. It's very frustrating for Ryong to deal with because his army right now is a whole lot slower than it was a while ago. Every time these ghosts try to go forward, Cero is there to land a fungal. Ryong tries to go for the hot pickup, but it does not work. When it comes to the service, guys, obviously same rules as always. Game 1 is played on US West, the server that is a little more friendly to Korean players than it is to Europeans. Game 2 will be played on US Central, and that is the server that favors the European players. Hmm. 
Massive Fungal lands on the love of the Thors. Now, Thors are very tanky, and Fungal doesn't deal a lot of damage, but it does just make it so hard for Ryung to get his army in the right spot. And Ryung is dreaming of one of the biggest concaves that the world has ever seen. And those brute lords to just fly in it, and Ghost and Thors do their thing, and then he hopes that Sarah will be broke at the back of that. Unfortunately for Ryung, Sarah is not going to give him that fight. Sarah is also not broke. I like how we dropped the Thor there to prevent the Ultra from getting on top of the Thor. No. I don't think that's the plan, uh, Wodka, because it is late in Korea as well. You guys have to keep in mind that dragging games out does not necessarily help Vitality. I mean, obviously, most of the Koreans are warriors of the night, and they do like playing games in the evening over in the morning. So if you ever try to run any Korean show matches, don't think you're doing them a favor by making them play at 11 a.m. or noon or 1 p.m. They, fr they prefer playing in the evening, but obviously uh, there is a point where they will not enjoy that much anymore. We're not quite there yet, but if this goes on as long as the Team Liquid against Basilisk Clan War went, there's a chance we get to see that time of the day. I think Ryong is just trying his absolute best, wanting to be a hero once more for Vitality. But I think we are nearing the closing stages of the opening map of the Grand Finals, WTO Code S Summer 2024. Saro had to work for it, it was far from easy. But we know that Yona can do this all day, every day. There's no such thing as Saro getting tired of winning. Saro is incredibly familiar with winning. He's having a good time. He's got a lot of minerals in the bank, he's got gas in the bank. We are a few fungals and a few blinding clouds away from game one coming to an end. Ryong put up a good fight. Definitely he did not make it easy. But yeah, you basically have to be liquid clump to win these kinds of games. GG gets called. Saro takes the 1 0 lead for us in the grand finals of the WTL Code S. And it may not look like it, but I agree with Jeremy. This right here is Saro's happy place. 27 minutes. A little army here, a bit of spell casting there, a couple of fungals, Broodlord's doing that thing. This is where our man shines. So now it's 1-0 for us. Ryong will play the second game on US Central and he can pick any map he wants besides the Ghost River. We have vetoed Ghost River. So he could go for Crimson Court, he could go for Proxy Barracks and Crimson Court, the way that Cure went for it. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything in specific that Ryong really loves. But we will see. Saro said I played so bad. I don't think that's what he said at all. I think Saro's okay with that performance. Saro is not a lover of Dynasty. But we just kind of felt that it was very likely Ryong was going to be sent out. And obviously we thought about selecting a Protoss player. But we also felt that even if Saro does not love Dynasty, that it's still going to be okay. That Yona will do Yona things. That he can hopefully win this first best of two. And then we enter into maps that he is a lot more familiar with, and we have already taken the lead. But we definitely ain't there yet. Saro took the 1-0 lead over Team Liquid, and then Cure did get the best of Saro in Game 2 with the Proxy 3 Rex. That is a game that I'm sure Saro has not forgotten about. Let's do it. Crimson Court, Round 2, Grand Finals. Both teams still have 4 lives. But we know for certain that Fidelity will drop to 3 after this series. Do we keep four, or do we also drop to three? How have you been, Mr. Roddy? Honestly, been very busy. <laughs> Streaming crazy hours, traveling a little bit. We have one more offline tournament coming up in Bulgaria, and then I kind of feel that we are entering a, uh, a bit of a quiet period where I can just relax, lean back, play some Padel, and play some different video games too. And see where the future of RTS takes us. Other than that, I have been good. We're in Bulgaria. Stara Zugora. Somewhere in the center. Not quite Sunny Beach and definitely not Sofia. We are going to Stara Zugora. It's a city that I've never heard of. Or never had heard of until like six months ago or a year ago when I went to Bulgaria for the first time. And for the Warcraft 3 diehards die out there that remember all the old school players. There was a very strong Bulgarian scene in Warcraft 3. Uh, obviously, Insomnia, the man who won the World Cyber Games in 2003, is from Bulgaria. That was actually my first interaction ever with esports. And yes, I said the year correctly. The year was 2003. Later on, when Warcraft 3 was booming, they had players like Diddy8, Shocker, 
Star and Diesel. And I was really good friends with those Bulgarians. So last time I went to Bulgaria, I sent them all a message. And it turned out that my friend Diesel was not living in Sofia, but he was living in Stara Zugora. That's the first time I'd ever heard of that place. And now I'm going there. So I obviously sent him a message and hope I get to meet up with him. Last time I saw him, probably the year 2008. Or 2007 even, so... It'll be fun to see some of these guys from gaming that I haven't seen in like 16, 17 years. Is it the Cravat of Bulgaria? I don't think so. It looks pretty nice to me. I actually heard that it's an up-and-coming city in Bulgaria. That there's a lot of uh, booming businesses out there and that it's growing at a very rapid pace. Maybe it's not quite there yet, but... I've heard it's quite pretty. Ask me in two weeks when I'm back here on Twitch how it was, but I'm excited. Leaving on Tuesday. Rainer is going to be there. Clem is going to be there. So you guys might get to see a little more Rainer versus Clem. <laughs> Should be a very fun time. A couple of the local Bulgarian players will be participating. A couple of the guys from Discord are making the journey just as fans. I'm excited for more offline StarCraft. But first, obviously, this was a big weekend that we were all looking forward to, at least a lot of us. I was hoping that today it was finally going to be our time. First time it did not quite work out, second time it didn't work out. Rian gets the creep tumor and actually gets away with the reaper as well. 2 HP. So. Rian gets a little victory there. 8 hour round trip to lose 0-1. Oh yeah, he went to a football game today, a multi. You guys had a perfect start, no? Three games, nine points. First time you go to the stadium, Watford loses immediately. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> More of the story, multi just got to cricket matches, mate. That's where you shine, that's where you do your best work. I don't go after two minutes. Unlucky. Saro sends a couple of Zerglings to the other side of the map. He has to get a little scout off, but uh, Ryong has an answer it. Pretty quick steam on the side of Ryong. Worth keeping an eye on. Long time ago, even before my Warcraft 3 days, I had that a few times, Multi. Not 8 hours, obviously, because if I travel anywhere for 8 hours in the Netherlands, then I am either in Germany, France, <laughs> maybe even <laughs> Poland or the Czech Republic, Denmark. So I uh, Never traveled eight hours, but I have done some like three hour bus journeys to Roda, like Kerkrade, Roda Jesee away and Groningen. Three and a half hours in a bus to see Feyenoord play an abysmal match and lose. Yeah, that's pretty grim. But I was young, had nothing else to do. <laughs> a lot of um, additional barracks is on the way. I'd love to take a little look at the main base of Ryang. Because do we have a starport, guys? I guess we have a starport. No? Is he just going for his little uh, PvP special? Triple star, uh, triple Rex for Ryong. Sero is going to try to get a little scout off. I don't know what he saw there. He did see the third command center. But interesting build here by Ryong, guys. Very late starport, but a lot of marines with quick access to Stim. Super important that Sero keeps on scouting. We don't want to be surprised with something silly. Sero obviously is incredibly good normally in continuing to scout. Ryong trying to bring something spicy here to the show. As four Hellions and a Reaper are thinking of a little adventure, Sarah already sets up the trap with the Zerklings in the natural. Olivera did this a lot of while ago. Seems like an Olivera build. Especially on a map like Crimson Court. Mm-hmm. One one upgrades on the way for Ryong as Sarah drops an infestation pit as his own evolution chambers that are finished up. Overseer is gonna try to fly into the main. Sarah will spot a lot of Marines will see the entire setup here with the Overseer. Hmm. Maybe like the point of Ryong's build is not necessarily to be very aggressive early on, unless he feels like it really is the correct call because the Zerg is mega greedy. But it is just to confuse and scare the Zerg a little bit and try to make them make a lot of units than they would have liked to. 
Obviously, more battle units for the Zerg means less drones, less economy, and gives Ryong perhaps a more powerful hole timing in the mid game. Definitely tricky, I think, to play against this kind of stuff as a Zerg, because if you build too many units and they don't attack you, you kind of feel like you're screwed because you can't really attack into them because they have so many units. But if you don't build enough units and they attack you and you just get A-moved, you also feel very silly. So, creative gameplay coming out of Ryong here, but I want to say that Saro has threaded these waters rather well. We haven't gone all out on units, but we haven't been silly greedy either. Zero has a little circling run by, and that's actually uh, something with some potential, as the marines are a tiny bit out of position. One of the upgrades are going to finish up for Ryong. Zero was a tiny bit supply blocked, so he has a bunch of overlords that are finishing up. Don't think we have too many drones yet at this base. This is where some of these Zerglings could be very useful. Ryong turns around instead after he saw the drones being transferred to this base. Sarah is going to be forced to keep a couple of units behind here on the low ground and needs to send a whole bunch of units into the main. But it's okay. Whenever I see trades like this, battles like this, I don't really panic. I have a lot of confidence in Sarah splitting up his army. <laughs> Well, we have ESL SC2 Masters 2024 Winter Europe. That all comes down to the Esports World Cup. They funded everything. So if we have StarCraft at the Esports World Cup, we'll probably have another circuit. If we don't have StarCraft at the Esports World Cup, I highly doubt that ESL is casually going to run some StarCraft events. They have done that for 14 years. <laughs> Eventually, they're going to say, like, it's enough. Oh, well, 10 years. But if they can do it as a part of the EWC, it obviously makes a lot of sense. I don't know when we know. If there is ever an announcement of, from the Esports World Cup and they announce 20 games for the year 2025 and StarCraft is not one of them, then we know. If they announce 20 games and StarCraft is one of them, then we'll probably also know in a good way that we are going to see events like the European Regionals or something a bit different but among the same lines. Let's hope for the best. Yeah, I th think we'll be okay. I believe StarCraft has done well over the last few months. And, oh, that matter of fact is a very low on HP, but the young does manage to save it barely. I think we had a great tournament overall. Saro is going to go for it, guys, with a couple Vipers landing some Blinding Clouds. This base is not a planetary yet, so it is difficult for Ryong to have an answer for all these bailings. Does a pretty good job with his Marines in the top right. But he's still forced to lift up this command center. This command center won't become a planetary anytime soon. Two of these medevacs still have a lot of units inside of it. Two medevacs on the right side had units inside of it. Dreamhack Stockholm is in November. There's a Dreamhack in Stockholm? Since when? I've never heard of this. I'm familiar with the one in Yon Shopping, but I've never heard of a Dreamhack in Stockholm. Sounds kind of cool, to be honest. Yon Shopping is a very beautiful city, but if I have to choose, I would rather go to Stockholm than Yon Shopping. It's just a little more fun. Stockholm is like Rotterdam, and Yon Shopping is like Zeitland. It's been there for a few years. Sick. Let's go to Stockholm, Zombie Grub. Always a good time, right, ZG? Some snaps, some after parties. Those hotels just hit different in Stockholm. As a, couple of <laughs> as a couple of the tanks get picked off, Ryong is once more forced to lift up the command center. Towards Zane 1, Dreamhack, Stockholm. That is such a long time ago, so that's obviously not relevant. Was that a Stockholm one or was that somewhere else? Well, you should have wasn't John Shopping. I obviously, I went to one of the, uh, the, the Dreamhack Invitationals that we had in Stockholm. I think White Ra actually won that. I believe that... Well, maybe I didn't go, actually. I was just watching. They had a one-day $10,000 invitation, or maybe MC one. I think MC was there, Naniwa was there, White Raw was there. Uh, but that wasn't a regular Dream Act. That was just a Dream Act branded event. But obviously, for it to be a real Dream Act, it needs to be a BYOC. But obviously, Dream Act has ran events everywhere. It was Stockholm 2012 by Tours in 1. That's sick. And that was a big one, because it had a live audience. The one day event that I'm thinking of that I think the Muslim and TLO actually cast it was also in Stockholm, but that wasn't a real dream act.
What is living the life? Why am I living the life? I don't know what that life is you're talking about is, mate. But if I can just listen to Queen on repeat tonight, singing that we are the champions with a bottle of whiskey, playing some deadlock with the boys, I'm living the life. <laughs> Does TLO still play? Now, TLO is working for the Shopify Rebellion. He is a manager for that esports org. So he's obviously in touch with the StarCraft boys like Harstem, Lambo, Scarlet, and beyond. And he plays a couple games from time to time, but TLO is not an active player. He is on the business side of things for Shopify. Marines microing the hard out for Ryong in the top left side as he once more is willing to play a proper drawn out macro oriented game. Saros here with a few vipers, drops the parabomb on one of the medevacs. Ryong is nice enough to make sure that it syncs up with the other one. It's always sad when a parasitic bomb doesn't do any splash damage. Saros thinking about dropping a solid, what is that guys? Five dropper lords? <laughs> 40 zerklings? A 40 Zergling drop in the main base. This double Parabomb kills both of the Metavacs. <laughs> 40 links will get dropped into the main base of Ryang, who does not really have too many units in position. Hello, Yona? What am I looking at, guys? <laughs> Sarah is so nice, man. He's like, Ryang, are you, are, are you watching? You ready, Ryang? And the is like, oh no, five dropper lords. Let me get on over there. So I was like, alright. There you go, mate. But that's one freebie I'm gonna give you. The next time I'm gonna drop them immediately. Is this a replay? Yes, it is a replay. It's actually a rebroadcast too. I recorded this last night. That's why I'm so happy and nice today. Because I know we're gonna win, baby. Woohoo! What a day. Couple of crossbow balls from the low ground. Chat is actually full of NPCs. Those people that you think you have beef with, they don't actually exist. They ain't real. <laughs> it's just you, mate. We're living in the Matrix. Life is a simulation and it's you alone in Twitch chat. With a whole bunch of NPCs. Ryong snipes a couple of bailings in the bottom right side. Is going to be forced to pick them up. Gets on top of the mineral line here as well. There was an EMP landing on the Vipers, but we still got a bit of spell casting down. Parasitic Bomb dealing a lot of damage. Medevac with eight Marines inside of it goes down. Sero did lose a lot of units there, but Sero is rich. Sero gave Ryong time to react earlier against his Link Drop. I don't think he's going to do that again. <laughs> nice little circling surround. That was a cool play. You don't have to see dropper lords with zerglings above a tank immediately surrounding it. So, like, it's not my fault you don't have units in position this time, mate. I gave you a fair warning earlier. Should have had a few more turrets by now. Or another sense of tower. Saro is willing to send it over here on the right side of Crimson Core. The EMP lands on one of the Vipers, but it's a lot of bailings. Link, Roach, Ravager. That base is not a planetary yet, so Ryan can actually lift it into the skies. The tanks do feel very exposed. Most of the tanks on the right side go down. One of the other tanks falls to friendly fire. Two goes by themselves. It is corrosive bows raining from above. Connecting with medevacs and marines. Justice rains from above. And we like it when it comes out of the ravages. Saro is really playing. Saro is absolutely playing. It's not the first time today. And hopefully it won't be the last time today. If Zero wins this 2-0, obviously he will stay on, and then we wait until Vitality decides which player they want to send out next. They have to choose between two guys that I don't think really love playing against Zero. They can go for Maru, they could go for Solar. This game is already won, honestly. It is looking incredibly good, I absolutely agree. But I don't want to be that guy that says the game is over and then a freak accident happens and then people are like, yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, I hate it when casters do this. So. But I will absolutely agree with you that this game is looking mighty fine for the great Jonas Sutala. But I'll let, I'll let you take the flag. Thank you, Bully. Thanks for stopping by, mate. Have a fun Sunday. Sign up for our Fantasy League, by the way, Bully. 
Nicely narrowed there by Ryong, as Ryong does snipe these two dropper lords from dying. Isn't it funny, guys, how you can watch multiple TVZs in a row? But even if it's the same matchup, and it is technically a European against a Korean, the pacing of this is just so different than the pacing of some of these games we saw earlier between our Zoomers. These Gen Z kids. They hit different. It's still a TVZ, but it just feels like I am watching a different matchup than those six games that I watched earlier. And Saro is looking beautiful and clean and on point as always. But it definitely does feel different. Abduct is going to land on one of the tanks as Banelings roll in, connecting with some of the ghosts. Two of the tanks fall, more Karosa balls will land. Ryang is a 66 supply away from maxing out. You can't be screaming, no head crusher, weren't you the one who said, it's over? An 18 minute game here on Crimson Court. Opening match of what could be a very long clan war. A rematch of the Grand Finals of WTL Coda Summer 2023. Where did uh, Tingle Tangle GG for Team Liquid go? I think maybe he got annoyed that I timed him out once. He left after I gave him a 10 minute timeout. Tingle Tangle is an all dude, man. He's like one of these guys that I kind of like to meet in real life once. I had the absolute pleasure of meeting Mango Mosh. I gotta say, online, he's a bit of a character. Offline, he wasn't too bad. But I'd really love to meet Tingle Tangle once, just so I know what I'm dealing with. And I know how to take some of his commands. <laughs> and there was a time, and I told you guys this story a few times, that I got mega triggered by this germ, <laughs> but I didn't know. There was a guy called Sex Starcraft. <laughs> he just kept on annoying me. And at one point, in my mind, I really had beef with someone like me, and I was like, man, this guy, he's actually kind of tilting me. And Sarah is going forward with Lynx Banes, Roaches, Ravages, blows up a planetary. And we had a whole bunch of back and forth. And in my mind, it really became like a bit personal between me and this other dude. That was also probably 36, 37. Was like me. <laughs> then I had <laughs> the chance to meet him at Home Story Cup. Together with his buddy, Shaq and Sung. And I meet the two happiest 15-year-old German kids that I've ever seen. Massive small ear to ear. Hey, Ronnie! So excited to be here, man! I love home story cup. It's so cool to meet you in real life. And I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it. I thought I had beef with this dude. And it's just like the nicest, happiest 15-year-old kid. <laughs> uh, and I've met them many times since, and they are good friends of mine now. A couple of blinding clouds landing on these tanks. Uh, so Sarah, I'll just continue. <laughs> To find some freebies. Ryong obviously does have a scary army, guys. It's a lot of girls, it's a lot of marines. And he's hanging in there. Once more, a 21 minute game. Can you pull some Dutch strings and get your countrymen out of Manchester? You have to reach out to the folks from Amsterdam. They like him. Yeah, I saw the result today, mate. Honestly, I did not expect that. What a start, by the way, for uh, the ex coach from Feyenoord, Arne Slot. Imagine you get assigned as Liverpool manager. And in one of your first games, you book a 3-0 victory away at the Old Trafford. If he wasn't popular enough yet, he's going to be mega popular now. Probably bullying 15-year-olds. Literally the opposite, mate. I've actually been uh, very, very patient and generous with them. And I'm very friendly with them. They asked me every home story cup to take a picture. They have got like four home story cups in a row right now with me and the boys. I've invited them to the big green bouts a few times. I like my German youngsters. They're good kids. And one of them is actually teammates with Cuckoo right now. Mm. Cuckoo growing up, taking the Roddy role. Mm -hmm. Not anymore? Oh no, I didn't know. Shang is now Heroes? He's been, okay. Well, he was on Team Red Pack for a while. Still fun to give it a shot. Sarah sitting on 12,500 minerals and 5,500 gas. Ryang is working with pennies. 
He's going through all his old jeans right now. A couple of the jackets that are hanging in the closet. Any minerals left anywhere? You open that drawer. You're like, man, I could swear. I got a few minerals stored up somewhere for a rainy day. Sarah's got a burrowed infester on the right side. As he is looking for a fungo. Here in the opening round. A couple of ducks are going to land on the Liberators and that will open the door for Ling, Bane, Hydra once more to get on top of this army. And Infesta came in from the top, landed a little fungal. It's a lot of Banings collapsing on tanks, but Saros finding damage in the center of the map, killing the Orbital, Zerglings in the third base as well. And the great Jonas Sutala is starting to look better and better here on Crimson Court. A game that has, according to Twitch, had been over for a while. And I wouldn't obviously disagree. But you still need to do it. And as long as the Terran has a whole bunch of ghosts and a couple of bases to mine from, always a tiny bit scary. In the hands of some Terran players, not just scary, but straight up terrifying. But the young is going to lose a whole bunch of his double depots there, by the way. That may actually supply block him. He has four double depots in a row. There's a blinding clown lens. I actually think we missed it on the first tank, but it is okay. Saro has so much money that he would love to take some of it into the next game. That is not going to happen. What will happen is that I think these are going to be the final moments of a game on Crimson Court. Ryang leans back in his chair. Let's go with a deep sigh. Takes his hand off the keyboard. The old man really gave it his all. I don't think Ryang played a bad series. He did his best. But Saro is an absolute animal with 120 Zerglings on the production tab. It is Saro who takes the 2-0 lead for us. First blood. We save all four lives. I love it when a plan comes together, and unfortunately, Ryong is eliminated for now. There's always a chance we get to see more of Ryong later, but there is no guarantee in that. Ryong looks so young. We, have, we were just talking about it, that he's been around since 2010, 2011. I don't think he's as old as me, but... He is obviously getting there. He's 33. Beautiful age. But no it for him. Hello, Scanet. Going well, mate. It is going very well, but hopefully it's going a whole lot better in give or take two hours. Obviously, don't want to get too excited yet. I am excited, but I don't want to get too excited. Uh -huh. Thirteen thousand minerals is enough to produce five hundred and twenty zerglings. For some reason, I would think it's more than that. Mm. Roddy is experiencing how four K managers used to work. I don't know. Just send out Grubby. Don't think they always won the team leaks. To be fair, I mean Grubby was obviously very good, but he did lose to me in the WC three L regular season, and he lost to me in NGL too. So it wasn't that easy. Made him work for it. I know Four Kings won once or twice, but they definitely didn't always win it. Alright guys, this is our grand finals. We have taken the 1-0 lead. Oceanborn up next. Vitality can send Solar, can send Maro. Since round 3 is Crimson Court, could send Solar. But Serral's ZVZ is so freaking rock solid. They were a record champion. Yeah, I mean, sure, but they also had an incredibly stacked team, right? And it wasn't just Grubby. They had Toth for a while. They had Fov. They had Creophilus. Like, Zeus and Fury were kind of like... All right, they were there. And they were not bad, but not quite as good as the other ones. Oh! They send out Maru. They send out Maru. Correct outcome was 2-0 for Serral. Next up... Saro versus Maro. Best of two. Oceanborn first map. Then it's loser pick. You guys get three options from me. Saro 2-0. Maro 2-0. 1-1 draw. I'll give you guys 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take a very tiny break. And by the time that I come back, I will be talking to you guys about this clash of two goats in the grand finals. We'll do quick intros and then I'll be back, guys. Bottom right side, uh, representing Team Vitality. It is uh, Maro. Top left side, we are looking at the main base of the great Iona Setala, the Finnish Phenom. It's GOAT versus GOAT here in the Grand Finals of WTL Code S. Serral. Tiny break for me, guys. We are back 90 seconds. And then we'll talk about 
this ZVT. Hopefully one for the ages. They played against each other in EWC very recently. Zero won, but it was a 3-1. to one. So Zero did, or excuse me, Maru did snap the streak. But it was still a 3-1 to one victory for Zero. Game 1 US West, Game 2 US Central. That's all I got. Be right back. I'm back. Now I forgot to get myself a drink, but that's okay. We'll do that in a little bit. Maru opening up with a Reaper. Seems like we got a Zergling, but I don't think we got a drone. It does keep the SCV around to make it a little bit harder for Sero to get the expand going. While Maru is dropping his own third command center on the other side of the map. What does the yellow and orange number stand for at the bottom? The yellow is the amount of workers they have. Orange is the army supply. So this is the amount of workers. This is the amount of army supply. It should always add up to this, but sometimes it doesn't because there are units in the production tab, etc. Those are very useful numbers to look at. If you're ever confused about how a game is going, if you don't have audio, or if you don't trust the caster that you're listening to, those are very important numbers to look at. It will give you a good idea of what the players are working with. Now, sometimes those numbers can lie. There are certain army comps where a player can have 50, 60 supply more, but they're really not in a very good spot. Think of unupgraded roaches against marine tank. It's okay if the marine tank player is is down like 40, 50 supply, they can still win. But there are a lot of scenarios that will give you a good idea. Hmm. Hmm. Maru over Solar. Well, <laughs> Saro is incredibly good in ZVZ. So... Maybe that's why Solar said I prefer to go later. I don't know. Maybe Maru likes Oceanborn. Look at the video I sent you, Kev. All right, take a look at it. <laughs> hey, careful with your monitor, mate. We need that monitor today. I, I don't want to see a scenario where Miguel destroys the monitor and suddenly uh, we, we won't have you and we have to send out Roddy. <laughs> I'll show you guys the video that I'm talking about. I know it's annoying. I'm talking about stuff that you guys can't see. How's Mr. Bitter doing? He's doing great, mate. Mr. Bitter became a dad for the first time in his life just a couple days ago. He has a son... Uh, literally born like four or five days ago, mate. So we're actually talking to him this morning. So Mr. Bitter is doing great. He's happy, and he is living the dad life now. He's living over in Gainesville, Georgia. That is where he's from. That's where he grew up. Works for his dad at the moment. Has been active in esports behind the scenes over the last few years. Actually, even worked for Mr. Beast for a little bit, but he stopped with that a while ago. And he worked for on some different projects, worked for ESO in LA for a while, worked for a different production company, and right now he's just working for his dad. Mr. Bitter is the guy that I was commentating with for a long time. 
as you guys know or some of you guys know in 2010 i was a full-time esl employee i did every event by myself for a couple months including a big offline event where i was also the observer and they gave me the worst mouse ever still have nightmares thinking back of that and somewhere in 2011 i believe in the summer of 2011 ESL hired Mr. Bitter to become my co-commentator. So, we live together, we work together, and then we both moved to California together to work for NESL for two years. And when NESL went bankrupt, that's where we went to different uh, routes. But we always stayed in touch, always stayed friends. Mr. Bitter started working for Red Bull, was in charge of some of those Red Bull StarCraft events that you guys may remember from 2014. The Red Bull Battlegrounds, some some events were mega cool. Maro, by the way, finding a lot of damage here. Five drones already, Banshee's still very healthy. Yeah. After a couple of years, Mr. Bitter stopped with Red Bull. And he actually moved to the East Coast. <laughs> then he started working for the New York Excelsior, one of the Overwatch teams. And then when that stopped, he went back to the West Coast. And now he's back at the East Coast again. So Mr. Bitter has been... Living all over the place, but he's doing good and he's happy. Yes, he, I mean, his, his dad, it's a bit complicated to explain because I don't understand anything of that, but it has something to do with valves. His dad runs a company in Atlanta in the business of valves. And now Mr. Bitter is helping out. <laughs> I obviously don't know exactly what his day-to-day -day life looks like, but he has some meetings. He's in charge of making sure that uh, companies get the right orders, etc. I don't know. It's a bit complicated, but nothing to do with esports or the internet. I understood Red Bull could have been a sponsor till now if Blizzard didn't make a big mistake. No, that's not really what it was. It's more just that the Red Bull spent a lot of money on making all these StarCraft events possible in 2016. And they were somewhat successful, but they were not mega successful. And then they ran a tiny Dota event with a much smaller budget. And it had 10 times the success of any of the StarCraft events they ran. So then they went a bit bigger on Dota. And then eventually they went into fighting games and... Then they just started sponsoring individual teams. Think of the team that won TI a few times, No Tails team. Mm. It's, it's not really, it's way too simple to always blame Blizzard. If it wasn't for Blizzard, there's a very good chance that we would not be watching StarCraft 2 Esports right now in the year 2024. Because they did keep the scene alive for a long time, even when everybody was always shitting on Blizzard. And it's not that I'm mega happy with everything they've done, but I think they also deserve a little bit of love. Uh -huh. They were definitely very interested in Warcraft 3. That is correct. But Zombie Grub said is spot on. The cool Age of Empire events they are running were actually supposed to be Warcraft 3 events. But then Warcraft 3 Reforged was literally the worst game ever released. <laughs> and then Red Bull said, yeah, no, thank you. Let's do Age of Empires. <laughs> Does each dot on the UI represent one game win? It represents a life. So right now Basilisk has four lives. Vitality has three lives. So Sarah is setting up another 40 circling run by, or 40 circling drop. At the same time he's thinking about absolutely going for it in the triangle. Honestly, Mara's pretty well set up. I hope that Yona is certain about this. Seems pretty good so far as the Banelings do find good connections. He's gonna get the tanks. There are a few more tanks in the back. Banelings looking to make it on top of the SCVs. Maru is aware of it, trying to save it. But there is just so much Zero. How Hero always looks like an absolute freaking monster against Raynor. It's starting to look like Zero is that guy for against Maru. And Maru is obviously looking a little bit concerned already as 39 SCVs have fallen. I'm probably wondering, what the hell? What the hell is this? I was playing a perfectly fine game, not a whole lot has happened yet. I killed a little, you killed a little, it was all fine. We were supposed to be doing this for a little while longer. <laughs> Sarah apparently has different plans for the evening as the Zerglings are going in deep. 45 SCVs dying. The first time that Sarah truly pulls the trigger and goes for it. What an attack. Uh, that's, that is a lot of damage, guys. 
That is a lot of damage. Two Zerglings in the mineral line, Widow Mine fires uh, the Zergling on the left, but a lot of these SCVs are still better than Bruce. Great first attack by Saro. Obviously, Maru not down and out yet. If there is one guy that is an absolute champ in hanging in there and making sure games never end and eventually turning it around, it obviously is Maru. But this was mega on the side of Saro. Terra is going to team kill Vitality. I love the confidence, guys, but as I said, we were here twice before, and two times everybody thought that we were just going to show up and win. And we didn't win the first time, we didn't win the second time. So, oh, that's a Widow Mine with a lot of potential. Doesn't actually get the biggest shot. But obviously, we are kind of flying so far. Maybe a Parasitic Bomb on one of these Metavacs. Yep, four units inside of that one. Maru does unload, but he's not able to save all of them. Sarah has already reloaded these Dropper Lords as he goes in once more. 24 additional links plus 3 Carapace about to finish up. That is a lot of Widow Mines, by the way. Sarah uses hold position, but so dangerous to run into all of them. There's more Zorklings in the main. And eventually, says, Sarah says, enough with your Widow Mines. I don't care anymore. Go ahead and get a big shot up or two. I'm maxed out. I still have some money. I want to go for it. Let's continue training and finding economic damage. Maru trying to micro his heart out, but everywhere we look, there are banelings blowing up everything. And Maru will tap out. GG gets called. Saral takes the 1 0 lead. Woo! I'll take that. We'll absolutely take that. One step closer. That means that Vitality will always lose their second life here. But obviously there's still a chance that we also lose our first life. There's also a chance that we get a perfect start where we take a two life lead. Once the team has lost four lives, it is over. Unless the other team also loses four lives at the same time. Then we go to the best of one ace match. Like we just saw. So we are taking a look at Xiao C and XY, our Chinese commentators. Like, man, Saro looks good when he plays against Maru. How the hell did Saro just cook Maru easier than he cooked Ryong? <laughs> Saro is a beast against Maru, man. <laughs> like, you can't really make this up, can you? And I don't think that Saro was ever in, like, real trouble, but there were definitely scary moments in the series against Ryong. There was a moment where they were both maxed out and neither player really had a bank. On game two, there were moments where maybe Ryong could have just gone for it with a very powerful marine tank push. Maro will pick Crimson Court. What was the map that Maro won against Cero at EWC, guys? I know it was a 3 to 1 victory for Cero. Cero won Oceanborn. Which map did Maro win? Was it Ghost? Was it Oceanborn? It was a very long game. Yeah, that was a mega long game, right? Like 40, was it an hour or something? Or 50 minutes? All right. Yeah, it was mega late game. All right. Here we go. Crimson Court. Not the first time we see Crimson Court today in TVZ. Bottom left side, uh, representing Vitality. They are the back-to-back -back champions of the WTO Code S. It is Maru. Top right side, he was our starting player. And he is absolutely delivering so far. The great Diona Sotala. Zero. We're gonna take a little look at our Chinese sponsors. Does Zero have to play until he loses? Yes. So it's the same format as obviously in the first clan war. If Maru wins here, then we are forced to send out a new player and Vitality is forced to send out their final player, which obviously is going to be Solar, because they're not gonna send out Crank. Unless Solar would literally have like no internet or something. If Mar if uh, Sero wins, Sero will stay, and then we get to see Sero versus Solar. Does Maru not have the mechanics to play like Clem? I don't think there is a Terran on the planet that has the mechanics to play like Clem. <laughs> and there are a lot of really good Terran players out there, but what Clem does is not just good; it's extraordinary.
<laughs> Rainer says, this is nice, getting in some rest, letting Yona do the work. It was a good interview, by the way, Rainer. It was a good interview, mate. Nice little riz in there. <laughs> Happiness. Look, looked good, felt good, sounded good. I mean, some audio issues, but I wasn't on you. Thank you to uh, ATL Mezume for the 33 months. Saying trust the casters. Maru not going for Turex Reaper. He is obviously spawning in the bottom side of the map. And that would mean that if he wanted to go Turex on the low ground, his add-ons would be exposed. Apparently he's having none of that. First Reaper shows up. Saro's defense normally here in the early game. Incredibly good. Maro is going to see that Sarah has already mined out these mineral patches. Hmm. Maybe yes, yeah, Saro has been taking a little note out of the playbook of Rainer. And we'll see a few drones go to those mineral patches at the bottom as well. I do absolutely love what it does for the Zerg. Just give you a new attack path that normally doesn't exist until we are in the mega late game and Terrans have an easy time dealing with all of this. I understand that the Ghost of Haku. It obviously has a lot to do with the fact that we ban uh, Ghost River. Crimson Court is difficult, but I think Ghost River is... This is almost impossible. It's not totally impossible, but I... I just think Ghost River is a must veto for us when we go up against teams. Like Liquid with Cure and Clam. Or Vitality with Maru and Ryung. Now, Amaro could have obviously gone for some other maps. It's not like the other maps are incredibly bad. But if he wants to play Crimson Court, that is his choice. You won't see any Crimson Court being picked by us. <laughs> Did I see Motive in Brood War the other day? Missed the... I saw that clip actually, Maniac, but I know so little about Brood War that I don't get it. But I did see people talk about how it was the worst proxy of all time, and I saw Bisu laughing his ass off, but... I just don't understand the context because I, I really don't know what's happening in Brutoir. <laughs> Losing the Reaper is obviously uh, a tiny bit painful, but it's not the end of the world. He proxied the wrong spot on a three-player map. So did he think like he scouted the main? And then he thought he wasn't there, so he proxied the other location, but... Instead it was actually where he scouted first. I think he was mining at that base when in fact he was. Yeah, okay. He tried to scout the place. I mean, I understand that that's funny and silly, but I feel like that stuff has happened before. I shared an embarrassing story from you guys of my Warcraft 3 days, my first ever offline event. Where I scouted the right side of the map. My opponent wasn't there. So then I just ran to the left side of the map. 50% chance he's either at the bottom or he's on the left side. If he's on the left side, I creep jack him. If he's not, I creep it and then I attack the bottom side of the map. So I scout right, he's not there, I creep on the left side, I get level 2, and I run to the 6 o'clock position on Lost Temple to kill the natural. Creeps are there too, I'm like, what? <laughs> There's no such thing as a human playing on one base. Turns out I played against a German player that got drunk the night before, he was hangover. So instead of selecting water elementals, he selected Brilliant's aura so he couldn't creep his natural. So I did it for him, so I cleaned his natural, then allowed him to expand. Gave him time to get level 2 in the center of the map while I was derping at the bottom side of the map and I ended up losing the game. <laughs> that is honestly more embarrassing than proxying the wrong location. <laughs> and it was a best of one. I flew to China to lose a best of one against fucking me you. Who got drunk the night before and he couldn't select the right ability on his hero. And I killed myself. <laughs> now that hurts. <laughs> The year is 2005 and I still remember every single detail of that game. Yeah, SK Miu. <laughs> the tournament was uh, Akon 5 in Xion. 
when the player I played was SK me. I was so confused in that game, I had no idea what was happening. And then after the match he came up to me to shake my hand and I was obviously tilted out of my mind. I just couldn't believe what happened. He said, ha, oh, sorry, got drunk the night before. Pick Brilliant's Aura first. Brilliant's Aura doesn't do anything for you, hero. If you have no other units, it doesn't do anything for you. It's like selecting uh, researching plus one flyer attacks when you have no air units. <laughs> Now, I don't remember every game I play, but obviously I do remember that, because that is just... That is ridiculous. That is a story that, to Warcraft 3 experts, people won't even believe. They're like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Sero is gonna play some Mutalist gear on Crimson Court. Seen a lot of Mutal play today, guys. People were screaming for it lately on Reddit. They're like, I miss the ZVT with Mutal Link Bane. Well, we saw Reyna play some excellent games against Clem earlier with the Mutalist. And now Sero is gonna give us some Mutal play too. Maru overall does have a good setup against it. Double Cloak Banshee is gonna try to get lucky on the other side of the map. <laughs> Nothing has changed with the Mutas. It's just that maybe Zerg players have like lost a little bit of confidence in some of the other playstyles and they're like, well, F it. Even if Mutas are not as good as they once upon a time were, if we play well enough, perhaps we can make it work. And Reyna did make it work a few times. Sarah a little bit late there, pulling that queen back. I don't think we had to lose that queen. Ex I mean, I know Toktara. I know how Brilliant's aura works, but... This is three minutes into a human versus orc, where the only thing that human players have are footmen, militia, and an archmage. So picking Brilliant's aura first is not a thing. <laughs> you pick well elementals first, and you pick Brilliant's aura second. <laughs> Footmen have no energy. Yeah. Bit of a nightmare of a game for me. I'd honestly say that is more embarrassing than miscounting minerals and proxying the wrong location. <laughs> Other funny moments, by the way, that I think a lot of you guys will remember is MLG Anaheim 2014. But there was a pretty famous North American cat in Russia called Wiedermins. Wiedermins actually lived in the house with Mr. Bitter and me for a while. And Wiedermins would cannon rush every single game. <laughs> and Wiedermins played a game on the stage at MLG, his big moment. And he grabs his first probe. And he grabs his second probe. And he builds his pile on the other side of the map. And then nothing happened. And everyone was confused. The man who cannon rushed every single game forgot his forge. Uh, Serral snipes the eBay, by the way, so plus two gets denied. Yeah, it's very difficult to cannon rush without a forge. He didn't have a gateway either, so the only thing he could do with two probes on the other side of the map was build pylons. Poor guy. Sniping the eBay here is big for Serral, denying plus two and it's attack as well. It's not even armor, so we're obviously loving that. But Serral is gonna have to try to break a very strong Maru here on Crimson Core, ten minutes in. Maro is getting some uh, sensor towers, some missile turrets. <laughs> uh, I know what you're talking about, I don't know, but for some reason I can't quite come up with his name right now. Gal Galzi? Was his name Galzi? Something among those lines. G A U L Z I, I believe. As the middle is fly into the triangle once more. I'm sure that the banelings will come, mate. There's a lot of Mutalists, by the way, by Saro. Saro is not just building a few Mutalists to distract Maru and force out some turrets and distract him. We are building a crazy amount of Mutalists that makes it more difficult for Maru to deal with this. And now the fact that Saro was able to snipe that eBay that was researching plus two is so annoying. And Saro's like, I got it once. Let's do it again. Good things come in pairs. Second time that Maru loses his engineering bay. And you can see how annoying that is for Maru. He's gonna have plus three armor before he has plus two attack. <laughs> Maru is gonna have plus three armor before he has. Oh, bit of bites! Okay, only one of them fires. Thank the Lord. That could have been a bit painful. Sarrow finding openings here, there, and everywhere as he grabs some Widow Mines in the center, grabs the tanks here. 
Maru now has multiple sensor towers. Don't think Maru can really do a whole lot offensively with plus one attack. That's just gonna make his Marines and Marauders so underwhelming. Alright guys. Juni comes in. First time in the chat with the hot take. Maru plays like he does not care. If Maru would care, Sarah would be in serious trouble in this best of two. But we got lucky, guys. Maru doesn't care. Spicy take, my friend. Ultralisk Cavern on the way. Acero has mined out some of these mineral patches. Links and Bane show up here in the triangle. Five SCVs fall. All that Maru can really do is wait. It is hard to attack. It has not a whole lot to do with wanting or caring, but it's hard to attack when you only have plus one melee. That is a silly amount of Bane links coming in from Acero. That's more than enough to blow up this PF. He's gonna get it. Maru did do a great job in saving as many SCVs as he could. One Thor left behind. Maru's gonna try to pick it up. Not quite in time. Saro snipes the Marauder, snipes the Thor, kill the PF. Honestly, all that Maru can do now for a very long time is turtle. Defend, sit back, wait for upgrades to finish up, and get a ridiculously strong Terran army. But Saro is gonna make it very, very difficult for him to get there. Even a couple of ghosts and missile turrets. Are not scary enough to keep these mutas at bay. Basilisk, and especially Sero, is flying so far in the grand finals of the WTR code S. Is the third time the charm, after all. Is the lucky general behind me, making the difference today. Starting to become a bit of a believer. <laughs> we had to go really, really, really deep against Team Liquid. Zerglings and Banelings get on top of the planetary here on the left side. The SPF will fall and that is going to drop Maru to only three bases. One of those three bases is wide open. It's just an orbital. Nothing really protecting it. Saro's playing excellent. Saro just plays his best ZVT when he plays against Maru. A long time ago we had a tournament over in China called the WESG. Maru 3 0 0 in a patch where Raven's anti army missiles did 15 damage. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but if you show up with 20 Ravens and you do 15 damage times 20 or even more because you have multiple anti army missiles, entire armies disappear without a fight. <laughs> that happened back then. And Cyril took that incredibly personally. And he said, Oh, I remember. I remember and I'll never forget. What you did to me with those uh, anti-army missiles, I'll do to you with every Zerg unit in the book. Maru does have a pretty powerful army over here in the center. Sarah goes for a tiny engagement, gets decent connections with the Banelings. A lot of Terran supply left over though. He'd be a fool to completely count Maru out if he's got 124 army supply, but obviously Sarah is looking very good. Kind of feels that all Sarah needs to do one time and one time only is clean up this army in the center of the map. Hero becomes a different beast when it's rain on the other side of the loading screen. And it kind of feels like Saro becomes a different animal when it's Maru who is in front of him. And obviously Saro is always good. And what happened at the ESWC Grand Finals is incredibly rare. Saro will lose a series here and there, but it's so freaking rare that the man looks hopeless or helpless. In the last five years of Starcraft, we've barely seen it. Everywhere we look, Saro is blowing up stuff. Maro is looking at his minimap. It's like, what on earth am I even supposed to do? As Maro pans his eyes slightly above his monitor and he takes a look at a poster of Liquid Clum. And he says, Clem, talk to me. What can I do? Clem says, I don't know, man. He's really good when he plays against you. <laughs> you can try to be like me. Maro's like, how can I do that? I'm like five years younger. <laughs> Links and Banes blow up a lot of Marines and Ghost Widow Mines in the center of the map. Maru drops into, uh, drops into the double digits and he knows that this one is all over. Saro gets another 2-0. First over Ryung, now over Maru. And that means that Vitality is down to two lives. Meanwhile, we still have a four. Next up, it's obviously going to be Solar. 
So I can try to do what he did a year ago against us in the WTO Code S Finals, and that is win a whole bunch of CVZs. You guys were strong believers in the 2 0 for Cyril, and he delivered. Cyril versus Solar, best of two. Opening map is Crimson Court. Sorry about Crimson Court again, guys, but at least it's a CVZ. <laughs> You guys think Sarah wins 2-0? Will Solar win 2-0? Or is it going to be a 1-1 one -one draw? I'll give you guys 10 minutes to get your predictions in. Our first clan war took over 5 hours. The second one is going pretty quick so far. Now obviously it could still go on for a little while longer. I showed you guys some of the results of the WTL code S Winter 2023. But of course Basilisk also participated in the Summer Edition. Back then, the Grand Finals is the same as this one. If we go back to Liquipedia, Solar indeed also beat Serol. Oh, look at this. This is when they still invited me for stuff. I don't know if I ever got this, by the way. Where are my buckies? <laughs> back then, the Grand Finals was on-site gaming. On-site obviously became Vitality. And it was a Solar going on a bit of a rampage. Also, Maru playing some great TVZs back then. Uh, Ryong getting the victory over Trigger right now things are looking very good for us but we ain't there yet it's still zvz it is going to be on a knife's edge i'm gonna go ahead guys and take a little break by the time that i come back it is time for solar versus maru solar versus Sarah. cannot be solar versus maru enjoy see you guys in a couple minutes mm -hmm. There is Solar. He looks a little worried. I've seen that man look more confident in the past. Round three. Solar versus Zero. Grand finals of the WTL Code S. So quiet suddenly in this ZVT. The ZVT was so loud. There were so many explosions. Crimson Court once more. Obviously, it is loser pick. Both teams have vetoed a map. If Solar loses, he cannot pick Ghost River. If Zero loses, we cannot pick Pulse Youth. It shouldn't really matter in a ZVT. I think there are plenty of maps that we should feel okay on. Solar has definitely done all right against Saro in the past. Saro is looking very good today. Sure, lost one map against Cure when he got proxy three wrecks, but hey, that can happen to all of us. Ready, drink some whiskey. We're ge we're getting there, mate. We are getting there. I mean, it would be silly to have a bunch of whiskey right now, and then we suddenly sit here for four more hours. Between WBG and Shopify, which team had a better showing against Liquid? 
I don't know. I think it was somewhat similar, no? I don't think there really was like one team that made it necessarily a whole lot closer than the other. Oh, there will be a celebration, guys. Don't you worry. If we end up winning it, there will definitely be a little celebration. Mm. Bailing that's going down on both sides, and both players have decided to take the forward base. So this could be an old school, very aggressive ZBZ. With a lot of Link Bane aggression for a while. With Bailing run bys on both sides. Let's hope the WTL Observer is sharp. We obviously know Solar is a very aggressive ZVZ player. This is no Neil Sucero. Rainer had, I think, a very good game plan coming into Solar when they went up against each other in the EWC. Sucero drops the Bailing Nest and the Roach Warren. Solar is going to do the same thing. Which is me. Solar is the one who drops the Roach Warren a little bit earlier, but there's not a whole lot to it. Sucero trying to prevent the drone from taking this rich Vespian, guys, but that doesn't work. Solar has enough units. It's a little bit tricky with Solo on the top side of the scoreboard, but spawning in the bottom. So don't confuse the players, guys. These guys do not swap names depending on where they spawn. What a season this has been. What a season. The season that we started off 0-2. Losing to Starlight Twinkle, losing to WBG, then winning nine play days in a row in the regular season. And now we are here in the grand finals, taking a 2-0 lead in series, 4-0 in maps. And let's hope we can continue the way that it has been going for a long time. Tiny Ling Bang skirmish over here, obviously always tricky when there is a bit of ping involved for both players. Game 1 will be on US West, this is the, ping, the game where Solar is going to have a slightly better ping than Serral. Serral, his two Banelings do get sniped in the center. And that is maybe not the absolute best start, but it's only two Banelings. Solar using one of his overlords to get high ground vision here to start working on the rich Vespian guys or Serral. That's kind of a cute play actually. <laughs> one more set of balls that should be able to do it. I think he still has vision of it, but Serral is going to try to battle this army. Couple Zerglings coming in from the bottom. One Baneling remains here for Solar. Does get a good connection. The one Baneling of Solar got a good connection, but Serral normally is an absolute master in these Roach Ravager skirmishes. Solar really wants to get that rich Vespian geyser but at the same time he also wants to make sure he doesn't mess up in the fight uh, he is gonna get it solar snipes the rich Vespian geyser of Serral let's hope that Serral immediately retakes it even though there is still plenty of gas income solar splits off a few links both players dead even on workers 37 versus 37 they are 100% mirroring each other no real advantage Serral has a tiny supply advantage maybe a few more roaches Ravage account seems even. Sarah's about to get his hands on one more. Solar is so aggressive in these scenarios where he just continues to go. And there have been games in the past where Sarah would kind of think that it's over and he would fire up a big round of drones and he'd suddenly be in trouble. But obviously what makes Sarah Sarah is that he learns from his mistakes. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes to begin with and when he does make a few he learns from them. I feel like this is starting to look better and better for us. Oh, is he still close? Sero gets a little jump here on the Ravager. Snipes a whole bunch of them. The Zerglings of Sero really making the difference here. Even if it's a lot of Roaches and Ravagers battling each other. Solar goes for a big counterattack, but Sero shuts it down with just a few Banelings. And if we're winning the fight in the center and we're defending against the Zerglings, we got to be cooking here now. Solar is reinforcing with nothing but Links. Sero's doing the same thing. Sero takes it just like that. A little jump on the Ravagers in the center of the map. Perfect defense against the Zergling run by five in a row for the great Iona Sutala. And that means that after this, Vitality will always go down to one life. Whether Solar wins the next game or not, Vitality will always go down to one life. And the question is, 
Will we have three or two? <laughs> Ryong was the closest. Ryong definitely made him work the hardest for it. Because even Yona cracks a little smile. Perhaps a tiny payback for those grand finals a year ago. That did not go our way. Things look really good, guys. We will always have a match point. Not right now. Solar picks Dynasty. Okay. The science victory is strong. Whatever happens next, we will always have a match point in the next best of two. Now, will it be Cyril who has that match point? Or will it be one of our other three players? Solar picks the Dynasty. Here we go. Who's winning the playoffs MVP? Saro or Rainer? Well, let's wait until the clan war is over, mate. I have gotten excited before in playoffs of WTL Code S. And celebrating before it's over is the stupidest thing you can do. Ask me that question if we actually get it done. We have never been able to get it done. But it is also has never looked as good as it's done this time. I know some of you guys may be like, ah, shut up, Rod, it's in the back. Maybe. Maybe it is, but... Let's take it one step at a time. <laughs> Don't jinx it. Why aren't people so hype when it was clam cooking? Chat was just tearing OP spam. I don't think that's true at all, Sim. Chat has been fine. Chat gave a lot of props to clam. Chat gave a lot of props to Rainer, and rightfully so. Because they were both amazing. I don't think there's been too much balance whining. Hmm. Obviously, Clem was on a ridiculous streak. Winning 31 official games in a row. And the moment that that gets stopped, yeah. People are like, okay, that's hype. The kid can lose. He's also your world champion. I don't think people were complaining. People were giving all the credits to Clem the way that he deserves it. But Reina deserved those credits too. Hmm. Both players have decided to take their in-base expand. Solar is obviously in the top right side of Dynasty. He said, give me Dynasty. That is the map where I think I can play my best ZVZ. Saro is on the bottom left side and is going up to three bases very early. This is obviously a strong deja vu to Dark versus Sarah at EWC just a couple weeks ago. Where Dark made like 18 Zerglings. Kind of tried to break Sarah, but it wasn't really all out because he droned up a little bit behind it. And then he went again later on with like Roaches and Lynx. But the initial Ling attack really did not do enough for Dark. I'm sure that Solo was watching that game. And if he didn't watch it live, he definitely has watched it by now. I think that was a world where that would have gone a lot better for Dark. If Dark would have gone all out on Lynx from the very beginning. Or he just would have not gone at all. And he would have gone with Lynx and Roaches together. But Middle down the road is often the wrong choice in mirror matchups. A bit of this, a bit of that. It can work. But if we're playing committed styles, it's better to just go all out. <laughs> Shout out to Air there anyways for the three months. I appreciate it. Solo is going to fire up 18 Zerklings. Has dropped the Baneling Nest as well. Saro still building drones. This is where Saro needs to stop being greedy, guys. We've got a Roach Warren finishing up. But this is really where Saro needs to start building units. Any extra drone right now is a drone too many. He did make another drone. First Roach is on the way. I think Saro is going to be in a little bit of trouble for the first time today. He sees the Zerklings coming. Immediately evacuates the low ground. I mean, he, there might be a world where he says, I'm okay with losing the hatchery as long as I don't die. Solar might look at this and say, I'm okay with taking the hatchery. But I think Solar wants more, especially when he sees there are still no units here. But taking a fight on the ramp against Queens is very awkward. Great transfuse, solid defense so far. First roaches are coming out. Solar needs to make up his mind. He's going to go for it with the banings. Not really. He does not want to use them. I mean, he gets two Queens, but that's just nowhere near enough. Getting two queens here for Solar is nowhere near enough. 
Still down 11 workers, building more units. Sarah with a very clean hold and obviously is building nothing but roaches from here on out. He knows that this was a pretty big commitment by Solar. Uh, Solar shaking his head. Sees the amount of roaches and he's like, uh-oh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, indeed. Solar is gonna take the L and says, you know what? I'm gonna just try to drone my way out of this. Built five drones, is now down only four, but Sarah has been mining quite a bit more than Solar for a while. And that is already showing in the supply, and that will continue to reveal itself in the supply. And Solar is now building a lot of roaches, but he's doing it as a worse economy. But Sarah obviously already has more. So it does snipe one of the Obies as the Banings apparently went for the Roaches there, but not all the Zorglings were on the same page, so only a few of the Links went for it. So they're basically just bleeding out a couple of units. Sero is on fire. All the Koreans are terrified when Sero is on fire. And Sero says, alright, you forced me to make units. I have made a lot of units. And now I'm gonna see if I can get some value out of them on the other side of the map. And he's gonna do dynasty things. It splits off a Ravager. Sets up the bait. Solar is gonna go for that Ravager. But the main army of Sero is here. I can imagine that Solar did not see that. Probably just feels that he needs to fight over that location. Because if he can't mine from the gold, he's always going to lose. Turns around. Solar has a decent amount of units here. But Sero should just have more. With the way that this game has started off. With the amount of links and banes that Solar made. He did not get enough done. GG gets called. Six in a row for Sero. In the grand finals. Patrick. And we are one map away from winning it all, guys. We are one map away from winning it all. And the GOAT is making it look easy. I'm sure it ain't easy, but he is making it look easy. One map to go. Now it is time for a revive match. Team Vitality can decide who they want to revive. Their revive player is going to have to go on the killing spree of the century. Wow, that ball is ready. The glass is ready, mate. It's on my desk. <laughs> Next map, a Ghost River. So, Team Vitality can revive a player. That player will start off on Ghost River. But even if they win on Ghost River and they lose the second game, it is game over immediately. Because they lose a life, we lose a life, they are out of lives, we have three left. From here on out, Vitality needs to 2-0, 2-0. Like 2-0, 2-0, and 2-0, and then this could be a 1-1. But they need to win six games in a row. Oh, sorry, it's side Delta, actually, yes. Sorry, guys, I'm blind. Yeah. Liquipedia is updated. I made a rookie mistake of thinking that Liquipedia was not updated yet. It is not Ghost River. It is side Delta. Six and oh, guys. What a lead. After the most epic lower bracket finals that I think the WTO has ever seen. We are looking at a relatively one-sided Grand Final so far. But we are on the right side of that one-sided Grand Final. A one map away from Queen and we are the champions. But I can't play that on stream. But I will absolutely play it all night long and repeat in my living room. <laughs> Vicky is going to start dreaming about Queen by the day that this day is over. She's never going to hear the end of it. Maru is smiling. The boys of Vitality are pretty much always smiling, no matter how it goes, whether they are winning or losing. They're always having a good time with each other. The camera is zooming in on Maru, which does give us the idea that Vitality have decided to revive Maru. So Maru is going to have to go for one of his all-time great performances. Yona is dialed in. I've got other stuff to do. That match against Team Liquid took forever. That is correct, Yona. It is Maru. It is Maru. Mm. Here we go. Saro will continue playing. As long as Saro keeps winning, Saro keeps on playing. Saro has a chance to end it here. It is not just a match point. It is a championship point. 
Zero versus Maru. Best of two. Zero one zero into GG champs. Maru one zero. Well, let's go one one into GG champs. Maru two zero. So obviously with this option guys, we think that Maru takes the 1-0 lead, but Zero wins game 2. This is Maru 2-0. This is Zero wins 1-0. And the tournament is over. I'll give you guys 5 minutes for what is hopefully our final prediction of the day. And normally I'm all for one who's always cheering for more StarCraft 2. But I'd really like to win it. One time. And one time only. Let's get it on. Shout out to Basilisk for giving 10 subs to the community as we are on championship point. The bottom right side of Psy Delta, the man who has won 6 in a row here in the grand finals. And don't forget, also had an amazing regular season going 12-0 in the regular season. It is Basilisk Serral, the Finnish Phenom. If Serral would win this, then his overall record throughout his entire season of WTO Codes would be 19-1. No, or 20 and 1 even. So, that's pretty damn good. Only dropping one map in this entire season, and that was against Cure earlier today on Crimson Court. Top left side of Vitality, we are looking at the main base of the man who was smiling a little. He was like, really guys? You want me to do this? I'm gonna have to do things that I haven't done since 2019? Alright. I'll give it all I got. It is our Go to Terran from Korea, representing Vitality, Maru. You know what? Reyna is the real MVP. We will see. I am not in charge of who gets those awards. There was a lot of drama over it last season. We'll see. I believe that you can give play of MVP to Reyna and maybe Grand Finals MVP to Cero. <laughs> I think in the end, guys, as long as we win as a team, we'll be very happy. Trigger will be happy. Don't forget about Showtime, by the way. Royal Roder in his opening season of WTL has never played in WTL before. I think he might be kind of happy that we decided to give him a shot. <laughs> Welcome back, Mospamos. The game is still awesome. We also have a big offline event coming up next weekend over in Bulgaria. $10,000 in total. And of course, tomorrow night is Monday. And on Monday, we always have a tournament. Normally, it is the European Weekly. This time, it is the Colorus Rodian... Steadfast Cup. As Maru's Reaper goes in real deep, does not quite get it. You can always join the Basilisk Discord, Crowd Bar Barney, and propose it. Exclamation mark Basilisk Discord. That is where you guys can communicate with the folks that are in charge of Basilisk. I did see somebody er ask earlier Is Basilisk your organization, Roddy? No. <laughs> it's absolutely not. I am just a streamer, commentator. I'm a very proud member of Basilisk, but I'm absolutely not the owner. Yeah, because I wanted to say Wadi for Jimmy. I'm just so used to saying Wadi. It's always Wadi. Because normally, it's always Wadi and me who do stuff together. But it is Clara's Roddy, and Steadfast. Or Clara, Steadfast, and Roddy. Basilisk involved in any other esports. They got started off in Valorant, but they stopped with that a while ago. And right now, we are looking. We have a big member of the Magic the Gathering community, Ristic Studies. He's awesome. And I don't know if the other announcement is out yet. I don't think it's totally out yet, so I can't, can't talk about that. Not going to make any mistakes here. Mm -hmm. Roddy's going to be the deadlock captain. Hey, if I have to lead Basilisk to a TI Championship 2, I will. <laughs> Just give me three years. <laughs> Three seasons is all I need. <laughs> Side to Delta. Maru opening up Triple CC. Heli and Benchy. The most standard Terran macro opening in the book. Saro looked mean earlier in that best of two. The man played it with a purpose. Like he was possessed on Oceanborn. And obviously beautiful middle -east play on Crimson Court as well. Been live for 8 hours and 21 minutes. 
in a one-sided grand final so far. That does tell you a little bit. <laughs> Join the Discord, a cool guy, and you can ask all about it, mate. I am just a StarCraft 2 streamer. An honorary captain of the team. Who do you think would win in a Warcraft 3 match between the Bastardous boys? I would. I'd wipe the floor with all of them. I played a single game of Battle Aces against Raynor, and pfft, I've had a lot of easy victories in that beta, but nothing was easier than wiping the floor with Raynor in that one. So honestly, I think it's just a Zerg thing, to be honest. But in every RTS, I would pick myself. And Rainer knows it. <laughs> Six Hellions and a Reaper leading the charge in the center of the map. Uh, Sarah has an Overseer, is going to drop a Changeling and get a good little scout off. PvP? Ricky? What do you mean with that, champ? Seraphia is up 22 Zerglings, double evolution chamber up and running, plus one melee, plus one carapace. Ah, yeah. uh, Rainer is very good with Protoss. Okay, it might not be a Zerg thing. It might just be a Starcraft 2 thing, okay? Leave me alone, guys. I did defeat him. Uh, when Raynor was at my place once, when he stayed here for like six weeks, I did beat him in a PvP. <laughs> he wasn't happy. But I think Raynor got better since then and I got worse. So I don't think that would happen again. <laughs> Meso Chovo says, I've looked it up and I think the only player that Sarah lost a series to in the entire year is Clem. That sounds insane. He did start off the year winning the Masters Coliseum, right? That, that sounds totally fine, you know. I'm okay with it. The more the merrier, you know. He, I think he lost a series in the Masters Coliseum, but then he got his revenge. Yeah, exactly. I think he lost in the group stage, but he won in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Will be a proper celebration stream for Basilisk. I mean, mate, I'm going to wrap up streaming once we are done. We're going to obviously have an interview with the team that will be part of the WTL broadcast. Well, once that broadcast is done, I'm also going to relax a little bit. I've sat here for nine hours. Let me relax in peace. As Serral sets up a Ling Bane run by. Gets a pretty good connection on a lot of the Marines. Tank dies, SCVs will die, some of the Marines are going to fall. Maru is thinking about dropping in the main, but if Saro has an answer for that, Maru would honestly be in trouble. This is not a lot, by the way. What happened to Maru's army? I'm looking at more medevacs here than I'm looking at Marines. And Saro is going to rally a whole bunch of Zerglings into the third base of Maru. Maru is already in so much trouble here, guys. Inside Delta is Saro just gonna do it all by himself here in the grand finals as he's even burrowing Bailings in that mineral line are you kidding me four Bailings will connect we don't even need burrowed Bailings 22 SVs go down a year ago it was Vitality that stopped Basilisk in the grand final six months ago it was the liquid club who stopped us in the lower bracket today it seems like absolutely no one is stopping us with an absolutely heroic performance by Raynor in the lower bracket and Serral just honestly looking like Serral normally does throughout the last five years here in the Grand Finals. He said, well, what happened a year ago was a bit of a mistake, a slip up. A little over a week ago, I was sitting at the airport in Saudi Arabia, in the Riyadh, and I was talking to Serral about these WTL Finals coming up. And he said, honestly, I am not too interested. Why don't you just play? I said, Jon, I don't think this is a very good idea, mate. I would really appreciate it if you could give it one final shot, mate. One final big effort and then you can take your well-deserved break, your well-deserved holiday after a very big 2024 for you. Well, I think it's safe to say that Sarah came to play today. 
Thero didn't just show up. He looked good as ever. Leaves a couple of Zerglings behind. Maro did see it. Kind of happy that we decided to go with Thero instead of Roddy. <laughs> Thank you to Hugo Synapse for the five gifted subbies. Championship point. Will it be an all kill? I don't know the entire like nine season history of the WTL codes, but I wonder if somebody ever all killed in the grand finals. That seems kind of crazy to me. <laughs> Feels like that is something that shouldn't really happen. Somebody has Liquipedia open. You guys can take a little look at all those grand finals. Perhaps it has happened once a long time ago, but obviously the last few years that was not the case. Last season it was a banger between Vitality and Team Liquid with uh, Ryong being the MVP. Today, the lower bracket finals is starting to feel more and more like it was the grand finals as that was an absolute nail bite or a five hour clam war between Bastusk and Team Liquid. In the end, it allowed us to move on to the grand finals. Trigger and Showtime have been patiently waiting for their moment until Cero says like, all right, somebody else needs to go. Or when Rainer recovers from his break. But it seems like no one is needed. Cero says, if you want something done, it's best to just do it yourself. Might even say good help is hard to find, but I think he's pretty happy with what Rainer did in the lower record finals. 27 SCVs have gone down. Maru looks concerned. Maru taps out. GG gets called. Cero does it all, all by himself as he flexes the shirt. That's right, baby. Basilisk crowned themselves WTL Code S champion for the first time in the history of the Orc. And we do it after an epic day of StarCraft 2. A heroic performance by Raynor in the lower bracket. And a fantastic Cero in the Grand Finals versus Vitality. We beat the two teams that denied us from a championship in the past. This time, it's our time. GG! <laughs> G fucking G. Let's go. This time, it's our time. <laughs> Let's go. That was amazing. They want to do a little team interview. We will do it. Maxet, by the way, guys. Shout out to Maxet. He believed 100% when it came to the predictions all the way. So I do have one very sad, tiny announcement. And I know it's the wrong moment to make a sad announcement. But guys, unfortunately, Cyril only had time to play video games today until 9.30. Uh, obviously, there is a world where he could have made it prolong a little bit longer, but he will not be a part of the interview. Uh, Saro really has to go. He's obviously still fulfilling his military service, so the interview will be done without Saro. But I'm sure that Rainer is going to yap for days. I'm sure we'll see a very happy Trigger, a very happy Showtime, very happy me. Obviously, one big final applause for Yona. Our goat. Our goat was amazing. Played one hell of a season. was fantastic. But he needs to go. And yeah, it is what it is. Military service is important. He needs to fulfill his obligations. But hopefully we'll do him uh, right. I'll let everybody know that they have to connect. Okay. Audio, by the way, guys, in this interview that I am doing, that you guys are watching from me, will not have the best audio probably it's going to be better on the stream so if you guys watch it somewhere else it's going to be better we can obviously watch it back everybody is in on uh, let's say i know uh. ggs ggs i'm so happy let's go na 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 we are the champions my friends. Dum, dum. Thank you, Lambo, for the raid. Appreciate it. Obviously, I'm going to let the boys do most of the talking. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I feel like I am in. I don't know how this thing works, but all right, we are in. I don't know if they can hear me. I see Trigger. I see Rainer. Can I full screen this, guys? Mm.
Dum, dum. Showtime is our Royal Rotor. First time ever. <laughs> First appearance in the WTO code S and the man wins it immediately. May have struggled a little bit in the very beginning with some of these Chinese protoses. And he got it done in the end. Awesome. Very, very happy. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, my audio is not activated. Recording uh, in progress. Uh, say, showtime, please say something. Uh, test, test, test. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, who's the test? Uh, I think... Uh, Ruta, can, can, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear. Sorry, I had it muted ah, earlier. Okay, okay. I didn't want to disturb any of the other interviews or mess something up. <laughs> sure. I can hear you guys. I can see everybody. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, so uh, just let's get uh, get ready for the uh, for the interview. Sure. Let's go. Are you happy? Of course I'm happy. Okay, 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 okay. Ah, two jobs are better. Ah, Yo, it's like 9.30, I'm out, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could tell he was rushing that game, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I really have to go. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Sorry, guys. That's not on me. That's not on me. I'm sorry. Hello, Gongxin,你们获得了这一次比赛的总冠军。那这边的话,三位选手由于个人原因没有能来到我们的赛后采访,那我们也会依次采访一下其他的几位选手。那首先要采访一下我们英俊少奇又有实力的雷诺选手,
but I don't want to be that guy, but <laughs> I, I beat the guy that beat everyone else, so... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I mean, I, that's a decent shot, I would say. <laughs> Sorry, come again. I, I just said I beat the guy that beat everyone else without losing a map, and I beat him three times. So I think I had good chances beating uh, Vitality. Uh, I think I should be able to win. Because I have defeated the people who have defeated them, and I have won three times. So I think I should be able to win. 嗯，确实太可惜了。这次总决赛没有能够看到你上场啊，我们只能下个赛季再看你的表现了。那我们另外两位选手也是总结一下我们本届 WTL 整个夏季赛给自己的一个 WTL 做一个简单的总结吧。另外两位选手。So uh, to the other players, uh, let's just summarize the you know your performance for uh during the whole uh season of this WTL, starting with the uh, showtime. The whole season? Yeah, the whole season. Well, just for me personally, the whole team. I'm sorry? For me personally, like my performance or the whole team? Uh, yourself. My team, okay. I would say my performance was so-so. At the start, it was a bit rough. I feel like I, I wasn't quite used to the format, I think. And uh, I don't know. I had, some, I had a couple of losses where I was very unhappy with. But I feel like... Throughout throughout the season, like towards the end and also like the middle, I was doing pretty well. Like I was getting some decent wins. I was getting some good uh, draws against good players. So I think overall, I'm I'm happy with how I performed. Uh, 我本赛季的总体表现，我觉得还行吧。可能开始的时候不太好，我自己打的也不是呃很好，输了的话也不是很开心。从这个中期到后期，确实是稳中向好，赢了一些这个比赛之后，我渐渐的开始。呃，高兴起来，而且状态也好起来了。我总体来讲是非常满意的。嗯，期待下个赛季有更好的表现。好，我们下一位。Okay, next uh, trigger, please. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about about most of the games or series that I played. Um, definitely went one one against a lot of good players. Um, only unhappy about like my first series where I lost to Jam, but other than that, I think I I played my best. 呃，我总体觉得也是蛮好的，和这个大家的对局打起来也是蛮开心的。开始的时候可能会呃对自己有一些别的，就想到之前面呃这个结果，对比本赛季，我觉得已经是很满意了。嗯，因为我们 WTL 是一个战队赛，所以一整个赛季打下来，我们其实要考虑到整个队伍他们在常规赛、包括季后赛、包括总决赛的所有表现，所以这一次冠军是实至名归的。那最后想问一下，路特丹这也是 BS。Yeah, actually, it's a, a team match, so uh, I think uh, everyone should be happy. Uh, well, you have won the the final champion, especially uh, Rotterdam. Please share with us how do you feel uh, for you uh, winning the first time WTL championship. I feel incredibly happy. This is obviously what we tried to do already two times before. We got close and we always looked so good in the regular season. But the playoffs is the most important. But I'm just incredibly happy. I think everyone obviously throughout the entire season has done their best, has played amazing games. But Reina was amazing in the lower record today. Uh, Saro, absolutely fantastic in the grand finals. And I just want to say a big shout out to Red Bunny as well. I think the power of the general helped us a lot today. I don't think we could have done it without it. <laughs> 呃，我实在是太开心了，我们这个能够拿到这个总决赛，而且常规赛的时候也是就打得还蛮好的，我们的表现也是非常的不错的，特别是曾经还一度陷入了苦战啊，能够打回来，我、呃、非常的感谢 c e r o 选手最后这样英勇的表现。当然也有幕后英雄，比如说赤小兔送给我们这可可爱的礼物，还有他给我们的一些这个气势上的加成，呃，也非常感谢赤小兔。好的，好的，非常感谢，也是再一次恭喜你们获得了总冠军，也是期待你们在下个赛季可以有更好的表现，谢谢。So again, congratulations to all the team. Uh, so uh, we'll meet you in the next uh, next season. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Red Bunny. Bye bye. Bye bye. No. Bye bye. 好的，那我们在最后的最后也是要请上。All right.
can go ahead and close the zoom sorry about the audio sometimes guys i know it's really crazy uh what we could do maybe is take like a tiny break and then i can have like a final little tiny call with the boys i think we can just yap with each other i think that's a bit smoother no zoom so <laughs> don't, don't you worry champ uh, i'll see if uh, trigger and rainer are down for that i think that'd be uh, and showtime of course uh, that'd be super fun hey guys maybe tiny yapping session with each other it's always a bit easier that way a few minutes a little talk about the season Let's celebrate and then we call it a day all right the rainer says i'm always down but we are back first awesome showtime says sure i know it's very late over for uh, in korea for trigger but i think he'll be okay with it as well so guys i'm gonna take a tiny break let me go ahead and grab myself uh that well deserved and much needed drink i am happy we're gonna do a little just chitty chat and obviously if you guys have any questions for rainer showtime or trigger feel free to shoot them my way and i will forward them they probably have chat open anyway so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, talk about everything if you guys have something to add, go ahead and add it. Take a tiny break, a couple minutes, and then we'll be back. Beer or champagne? I do actually have a bottle of champagne, but I don't know about champagne at 8.40 on a Sunday. But just a nice whiskey, and as I said, we're going to play some Queen tonight. <laughs> we are the champions. couple minutes, interview coming up. I'll put it in text as well.